What's up guys and welcome back. Today I'm gonna to teach you the top three things that I learned about the sports card hobby and how you can use those to be successful. The number one thing that you need to do is know how to price your cards. Whether you're going to a card show, you're buying cards online, or you just wanna know what your current cards are worth, you need to know how to go to eBay and look up sold prices. You need to be able to look up your cards on eBay filter to the sold listings and be able to see what cards are selling for this is the most widely used uh, app or internet product whatever you want to call it that is used in the sports card hobby for pricing cards whether you're going to a show and you pull it up on the app on your phone to know both what you can get for your cards and also what you should be paying for cards that you might potentially buy you need to know how to do this if you don't know how to do this you may also kind of look like a noob if you go to a card show if you're walking around and you want to buy something but you know people have a, a price sticker on something for three hundred dollars and you might not want to pay that and then they're like well make me an offer you don't know how much to pay because you don't know what the card's actually worth you got to be able to look it up make sure that you know how to use eBay so when you go in there you can use the search feature to filter to the card that you're looking for you put in as many details as you can let's just use a Tom Brady upper deck black diamond example uh, 2000 upper deck black diamond Tom Brady put that into the search bar when the items come up you go in the upper right hand corner you filter to sold listings and completed sales you got to check both those boxes once you do that it's gonna pull up some I believe they're in green those prices will tell you exactly what the item sold for now if it's sold on auction you will also see a little spot that says maybe like 15 bids or 20 bids however many total bids were placed during that auction and what the item sold for if it was a fixed price you probably won't see that it'll just say like fifteen hundred dollars or best offer now if you want to know what that card actually sold for you need to go to one three zero the word point dot com one thirty point dot com type in the exact same description that you typed in to eBay and it will pull up that card and it will tell you what the actual price was so if it was listed for fifteen hundred dollars or best offer but the person accepted an offer at twelve hundred or 1300 it'll show the 1500 with a line through it and then it will tell you that it sold for 12 or 1300 so make sure that you absolutely know how to price your cards it is going to help you be way more successful is the number one thing that i learned how to do in the sports card hobby all right now whether it's sports cards or anything else that you do in life you need to be able to protect yourself you need to look out and have your own back so i'm going to talk about that now using a service like goods and services through paypal is a great way to protect yourself especially if you're buying cards online and you want to protect yourself from online fraud and scammers if you don't use paypal you probably should there are other payment services you can use like a venmo or a zelle or other things like that but the best way that i found to protect yourself when buying cards online is using paypal goods and services so when you send money with PayPal, there's two ways to do it. You can do a friends and family transaction, which is like if you wanted to send 15 bucks to your Nana so she can get lunch, you can do that. If you want to buy a product, you can use goods and services, meaning that you are protected. So if the uh, seller of the car does not deliver on what they say they're going to, you can attempt to, and more than likely, you're going to get your money back. It's like a 99.9% .9 success rate, at least in my personal experience and with people that I've talked to. If you don't get what you're promised, you can get your money back through PayPal Goods and Services. Now, you do have to pay an additional, I believe it's 3% right now, um, to use that transaction. So if you're sending someone $100 for a card, you pay $103. The extra $3 goes toward that buyer protection. So make sure that you do that. The other thing that you can do if you want to protect yourself, you really need to, especially buying online, right? You need to do your homework. You need to check people's Facebook pages if you're doing a transaction through Facebook. You need to become a detective. Check out their friends. Check out their family. Check out other posts. It gives you a lot of information about the person that you're dealing from. So if you've got any questions in the back of your mind that this person that you're dealing with may not be legit, you need to do your homework. Remember, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it's a duck. So if it looks like a scammer and it talks like a scammer, it's a scammer. Do not send your money to someone who is trying to scam you. Make sure you protect yourself at all costs. It does not matter if the other person gets mad at you or if they're not happy that you're backing out of a deal. Make sure you protect yourself. The last thing you want to do is pay $100 plus for a card and then get scammed and get the wrong thing or get nothing at all, and then you're out $100 plus of your hard-earned money. So don't do that. Make sure you protect yourself. 
The other thing that you 100% absolutely can do that people are okay with, and it's a well-known practice in the hobby as well, if you're in a Facebook sports card group and you're doing a deal with another member and you're maybe a little bit hesitant to do the deal because you're not really sure if the person is legit, do not be afraid to ask if they've done any other deals in that group with other members and see if there is someone else who is willing to vouch for them preferably someone that you know and trust and someone that you've done deals with before, but make sure that you have that person, have someone else vouch for them to make sure that once again, you are protected. I can't stress this enough. Do not get scammed when buying and selling sports cards. All right, the third thing that I learned is that nobody knows what they don't know. So do not be afraid to ask questions. Show up at a card show with absolutely no expectations. Talk to people, just be friendly and ask about cards, make offers to people. If someone likes you and they know that you're a flipper, or I'm sorry, if they know that you are not a flipper and that you're more likely uh, to collect a card and put a card that you're buying into your collection, they are a lot more likely to work with you and give you a good deal. People at card shows, dealers, especially the ones that have been doing this for a very long time, are not very happy with how things have transpired over the last couple of years, other than obviously that rise in prices because they were able to sell a lot of inventory, make some money. But they do not like all the new people that have come into the hobby that are just about buying and flipping sports cards. So if they think that you're trying to make money off of something that you're buying, they are a lot less likely to work with you and they don't really care what your motives are for buying that card. Unless you're a true collector and they know that it's going to a good home, then they're more likely to work with you. So if someone has a card marked at, you know, two or three hundred dollars and you know the cards have only been selling for like maybe 150. If you're having a conversation with someone and they get to know you and they like you and they know where you're from and what kind of cards you collect and that you grew up watching that team and then that's your favorite player or maybe that you're a, a collector trying to complete a set and that's one that you need, they're a lot more likely to be friendly with you and kind of work with you on price and they want to sell those cards. Now nobody wants to lose money obviously. Nobody wants to buy something for 100 bucks and then sell it for 75. If we all did that, we'd all be be broke. Or more broke than we already are but you can find people to work with you and you can definitely get good deals in person at card shows. so just be patient walk around talk to people get to know them let them know what you're looking for and people will help you out they'll point you in the right direction i've also had people that know that i'm looking for certain cards too and they'll tell me where other cards are located i've tried to do that with some of my friends in the hobby too and say look i know that you're after like this certain player or this certain type of card you know, this guy over here has got some of those that you're looking for. I try to always look out for people and uh, kind of help them out if I know that it's going to help them complete a collection. So just don't be afraid to go. Have no expectations. Just show up, haggle with people, get to know people, build some connections in the hobby, and you might have some serious success in 2024. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. I look forward to doing more of these. If you haven't done it already, please subscribe to the channel like this. Drop a comment below to let me know if any of these tips did work for you, and I will catch you next time.